Week 7, Problem 15. Three long parallel conductors each carry a current of 2.2 amps. The figure below is an end view of the conductors with each current coming out of the page. Take, taking A equals 0.75 centimeters, determine the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field at the following points. All right, point A. Okay, I think we can do this. So I'm gonna start by writing up our equation for an infinite wire. So for an infinite wire, it's, I'm gonna use B equals mu naught I over two pi R. So really this is the same thing as a um, the equation for the finite wire, except for finite wires, mu naught I over four pi R with cosine theta plus uh, cosine theta 1 plus cosine theta 2, where theta is the angle mixed with the endpoints. And for an infinite wire, it simplifies to this. All right. So we're, let's see. Figure below, the current. Determine the direction and magnitude of the fields. Okay. A equals 0.75. Okay, so I'm going to write that guy in here. 0 0.75. Okay, and then each of these is 2.2, 2.2. Okay, so I'm going to look at each individual. I want to find this length too, just to... So this length is going to be a squared plus b squared. A squared plus a squared, which will be 2a squared, square rooted. will be square root of 2 times a. Got it. All right, so for this guy... It's going to create a magnetic field using the right-hand rule since that's coming out of the board, Oop, like this. So we're going to get a... Ooh, I could actually use real arrows. I think I have a... Yes. Oop, this direction. I'm going to use... Hey, it's boulder lines. There we go. And let's make them teal. There we go. So that direction. And for this, I'm going to create a circle around there, which will be means it'll be in this direction. And then looking at the far wire, we get the right hand rule to find the direction. Yep, it'll be down. There we go. And then down. All right. So since everything is a square, this guy right there is going to be 45 degrees. And just as importantly, the top one will cancel out the bottom one giving us um, only the um, uh, y component that matters. So we'll, and we'll use the cosine there. So the way I'm going to do this, just to simplify life, I'm going to call this guy 1, this guy 2, and this guy 3. So B1. equals mu naught i, which is 2.2, divided by 2 pi, and then r, which r, which we know was, what, it was square root of 2 times a. All right, and then we only want the um, component that's in the y direction, so we're going to have square root of 2 over 2. That's the cosine of 45. All right, so do some quick canceling. Hup, hup. And you know, turn these guys into 4 pi. All right. So we're going to have this equals mu naught. And we're going to have 2.2 .2 over. 4 pi a. All right. And then we're going to have that's also going to equal b2. Got it. All right. So now we're going to find b3. So that'll equal mu naught a, which is 2.2 .2 again. over 
we'll do 2 pi. Now we need to find r, the distance. So it's 1, 2, 3 eighths. So we'll do 3 eighths. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to do b1 plus b2 plus b3. There we go. b1 and b2 are the same. So I'm basically going to call, call it 2b1. 2b1. So I'm going to mu naught times 2.2. Instead of writing a 4 on the bottom, I'm going to call that 2 pi a. 2 pi a plus, and then I'm going to kind of cheat on this one. There we go. Copy, paste, bam. All right. I'm going to say equals. I'm going to do some, uh, actually, I should probably just write mu naught a. I want uh, mu not 2.2 really well one time, and that will then I just copy and paste it. 2.2, there we go. And then we'll be able to factor out a pi, 2 pi from all of them. And let's see, what are we left on this? Ooh, 2 pi a. There we go. And we have one plus one third. Oh, that worked out pretty well. Yeah, that did work out pretty well. All right, so now I should probably actually do the math. They're looking for a real number, aren't they? Yeah, they're looking for a real number. Okay, so this guy will be four thirds. And let's see here. A. We we're told what A was. A was 0.75. Ooh, that's three fourths. Heh, interesting. All right, 0.75. Okay. Mm. I'm just gonna put that all into Wolfram and see what happens. So mu naught is four times pi times 10 to the negative seventh. And then 2.2 .2 is just going to be 2.2. .2. Then we're going to, let's see, multiply by 4 thirds. Multiply by 4 thirds. But, um, I'll say multiply by 4. Hopefully I won't remember the thirds on, third on the way, on the bottom. And 2 times pi times a, which is 0.75, times the third. And we'll see if that gives us an answer. 7.82 Seems awfully large hmm. Ah, times to the negative 7 Okay, 70, so 78 So 78 microtesses All right there we go. And the direction will be down. Perfect. Got it. Okay. On to point B. So point B, we do the same thing here. So get out our arrows. So I'm gonna start with one. Is there a high key for that? Yeah. Okay. So for one, look at it like this. Wire coming that way. So we're gonna get an arrow going to the right. Look at two, we're gonna get an arrow going to the left. And look at three, we're gonna get an arrow going down. All right, uh, magnetic fields one and two are gonna cancel each other out. And all we're gonna be left with is magnetic field due to three. So this is already magnetic field due to three. And it'll tail onto this guy. Oop. And then the distance changed a little bit here because before it was 3a, now it's just going to be 2a. So 
So you can go away. And you can be you can be a two here. I'm gonna simplify this a little bit because we got four pi times ten to the negative seventh over times two point two over four pi a. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Which gives us 2.2 divided by 0.75 times 10 to the negative 7. Okay, that works. Open like a new tab. 2.2 times 10 to the negative 7 divided by 0.75. And we get 29. 29 microteslas. And then this guy is also going to be downward. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to have this very similar situation then with C. So with C then, let's start. So for one, let's see here. For wire one, so thumb along the wire, wrap the fingers. We're gonna get a direction. Ooh, that's an, that's an exciting arrow. Didn't mean to have it that exciting. It's more like a weekend type arrow. All right, up and to the right. Okay, now for number wire number two, going up and to the left and then for three it's going to still be down but three is getting more powerful now because it's um, closer so I think this is actually going to be the exact same so we use the same methodology we did for all of these um, this is going to be the exact same as this guy right here So what happens here is these arrows are going to be the exact same strength for one and two um, because they're the exact same distance away, they're just on the other side and now they're pointing upwards. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to change, nope, I'm going to change this sign right here and I'm going to change this guy from three, uh, did I, nope, nope, uh, maybe I can just turn it, aha, shazam. All right, so this portion right here is the impact of one and two, taking into account the fact that we have a 45 degree angle on them. This is the impact due to wire three. And, yeah, yeah, mm, ooh, is that zero? No, it's not supposed to be zero. I don't think it's supposed to be zero. Ooh, now I'm trying to question myself. All right, let's work it out. Hmm. So for one and two, so B1 equals, ooh, wait a sec. That might actually make sense. Is there all, no, no, hmm, interesting, interesting. All right, so B1 will be mu not i over 2r 2 2 pi r there we go and r in this case is going to be square root of 2 times a okay but we only want a portion of it specifically the cosine of 45 degrees so we square root of 2 over 2. These guys cancel. So then the combined impact of B1 and 2, I'm going to call B1 2, will be twice of it, which basically means we'll get rid of this other 2 here. So we've got mu naught, mu naught i over 2 pi 
A. You're not I or two pi A. Yeah, okay. So then B3. Will equal mu not I over two pi A, because A is the distance it's from. Those are exactly the same. Oh, crazy. Mm. These physics creating problems, people. Quite clever. Quite clever. Well done. Alright, so I'm going to say the magnitude is zero, and therefore the direction is none. So, I guess as a general rule, if you have a whole bunch of guesses, and if you don't know what the answer is, you know, guess zero and one. Probably one of those two answers. Okay, so that is problem 15. That was, that was pretty good. That was interesting. I liked it. All right, and on to problem 16. Problem 16.